creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much for joining me today for Creative Living. We're going to learn how to make custom needlepoint creations. We'll discuss what true abundance in our lives really means, and then we'll discuss lactose intolerance and find out what to do about it. One of my guests is Sandy Grossman Morris, and she's going to show how her company uses a Giclee process to reproduce images on canvas, which results in ones that are vivid in color and water resistant. Her business is Sandy Grossman Morris Design in Brentwood, California. Next, we'll talk to Louis Dor Dempree, who is a spiritual master, and he's going to talk about how to create abundance in your life. Louis is the founder and CEO of the Louis Dor Dempree Foundation in Laguna Hills, California. And we'll begin the show by talking to Sarah Robbins, who is the director of Dairy Confidence with Dairy Max. She'll also explain how those who are lactose intolerant can also enjoy dairy products. She lives in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Sarah, thank you for being here today. This is already smelling like it's going to be a very interesting segment. But I wanted to talk to you about, I understand there's new dietary guidelines. Correct. The 2010 dietary guidelines were recently unveiled. And what that really does for dairy is it really uh, makes the impact of dairy um, just as important as it was in the 2005 dietary guidelines. Uh -huh. And the servings uh, and for the age groups has changed a bit too, hasn't it? Just a bit. So they still recommend three servings every day mm -hmm. for uh, people nine and older. It has changed for f kids four to eight, oh, and wait. that has changed from two servings a day to two and a half servings a day. I think it's day. because they were sort of cheating on that, and maybe not even getting that full two servings. So I think that's a good, it's a plus. Correct. And it's still the same for two to three year olds. So the, the mm -hmm. same for uh, two to three year olds is two servings a day. Okay. And then they also have looked at the nutrients of concern, which are calcium, vitamin D, potassium, and fiber, mm -hmm. with a specific emphasis on children. And so with our kids, what we really want to see is that they are getting their three servings of dairy every day and that they start at a young age. Mm -hmm. Because kids, when you start at a young age, then you'll they see that they will then uh, take that into adulthood uh -huh. and actually get those um, nutrients that they need from milk. And um, what's interesting is is that dairy foods like milk, cheese, and yogurt have three of the four nutrients of concern. So oh, wow. calcium, vitamin D, and potassium. Uh -huh. So um, that's why the milk... That's why we want to promote the dairy products. Exactly, exactly. And, and you mentioned about the cheese and the yogurt, of course, too. And the dish that you're going to prepare today is, is called a, a breakfast casserole. Mm -hmm. But it really is high in all of those, those nutrients that we need. And uh, it's not like just having to sit down and drink a glass of milk. Exactly. So you can definitely incorporate milk cheese and yogurt into a lot of the things that you eat. And breakfast uh -huh. tends to be one of the ones that we um, incorporate all, a lot of our dairy uh -huh. foods in. And so this Start is a breakfast the day off right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And what we're actually starting with here is some mushrooms that I've sauteed in. Uh, that's what smells so good. That's right. A couple tablespoons of butter. Um, and what's good about this breakfast casserole is uh, the vitamin D and the calcium very, and potassium are very high in this breakfast uh -huh. casserole. And it starts with um, the mushrooms and the eggs and the milk all uh -huh. have good, are good sources of the vitamin D. And, and what is, this is also one, isn't it, that you could make the night before and have it ready to cook? Because sometimes we don't mm -hmm. get up right on time or we have little ones that... And this is a perfect recipe for that because you actually need to soak it overnight so that the bread perfect. actually soaks up the egg. Uh -huh. So you can either do it at night for the, the next morning mm -hmm. or in the morning for dinner. For dinner. You know, oh, breakfast for way. dinner is a, is a great way to go, it too. Is. So I added some onions here and um, just we've sauteed those up. We have an eight by eight pan with, I took six slices of French bread and cubed that up, mm -hmm. sprayed some cooking spray in there. You know, it's a great way to use bread that's just maybe not quite as fresh as it was when we bought it, but exactly. it's still too good to throw away. Exactly, exactly. So I'm taking about half of the mushrooms mm -hmm. on the bread there, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna take about half of two cups so of shredded cheddar this. cheese, uh -huh. exactly. We're gonna put this on here. And you know, the fact that you can get the pre-grated cheese, everything now is so easy for us to cook healthy it if is. we'll just take the time. Exactly, exactly. And it, you know, it, a lot of times it's just a little 
planning ahead. Mm -hmm. It is. So, I think you're right. Um, you know, making that shopping list when you go to the grocery store ahead of time. This is the other half of the bread. The other half the of the bread. bread. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the rest of your mushroom mix with the onions. We kind of spread that on top of there. And then we're going to go to the eggs. We have eight eggs mm -hmm. and some milk in here. So and you just mix them up with the whisk. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. And so this serves probably what four? Does this make four, six servings? About yeah, six so to eight really servings. So we're really getting our daily like... servings in this one recipe. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And eggs, we should add eggs actually back onto our shopping list. Uh -huh. um, eggs. American I never Heart took Association. Them off of mine. <laughs> Perfect. I just I love eggs. Mm -hmm. American Heart Association. Um, doesn't limit the number of eggs that we have in our diet every day oh. now. Oh, uh -huh. um, they've just found it was a concern about cholesterol mm -hmm. and people that eat eggs don't mm -hmm. have an increase in cholesterol. So Good plus news. we get the benefits of vitamin D in here uh -huh. as well as lots of B vitamins and then choline in pregnancy as well. Oh, okay. It's important. And I noticed the, the hot sauce and that can be added if you really like it uh -huh. hot, add a lot or just right. a little bit for a flavor. It just adds a little kick as well as a little bit uh -huh. of um, salt there. And then you just take this and you just pour it right on top mm -hmm. here. And then we're going to add the cheese on top. Okay. The rest of the cheese. There we go. And then you would cover this with foil and okay. put it in the fridge. And um, let it soak overnight, ideally, or all day. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. And then um, bake it in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks so good. Take the foil off and let it brown and, and crisp up just a little bit for about another 15 minutes. Uh -huh. And there we have our cheddar and mushroom breakfast casserole. Mm. And then when you pair it with some berries, you're actually getting that fourth nutrient of concern, which oh. is the fiber. Uh -huh. So now you're you're starting your day off right. We are. And, and being able to prepare, do all the work part of it the night before, put this in, maybe go ahead and do your shower or get the babies ready or whatever exactly. you need to do and then right. it's ready to eat. We have exactly. no excuse. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you can find this recipe actually on um, at dairymax.org as well as other tips and ways that you can incorporate mm -hmm. three servings every day so you can get those nutrients mm -hmm. like calcium and vitamin and lots of other recipes. I go there exactly. a lot of times and get my recipes. So thank you very much. I appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Louie, it's really nice to have you here today, and I'm so excited to get to talk to you about so many things. It's like, you know, you want to have somebody there all the time that you could talk to. But what I wanted to talk to you about, and, and I have to admit I'm guilty of this, is always thinking about what else do I need? What else do I want? Uh, what else can I bring into my life? And uh, you talk about, in fact, the quote was, where your consciousness goes, your consciousness grows. What do you mean by that? Well... Whatever you place your focus on, you create. Whether people know that or like it or believe it or not, it's just true. And the principle, the underlying universal principle for that is that we are created by God in God's image and the universal life force energy, the primal force of creation, the same energy that the Creator used to create flows through us. And we direct that with our consciousness when we're aware of it and even when we're not. Mm -hmm. So all of our thoughts, feelings, words, opinions, belief systems are channeling and directing that primal force of creation that, that breathes us and sustains us. It also, we, using that and it using us, manifests in the world. And how it gets sent and directed is through our conscious and unconscious thoughts, feelings, beliefs, words, deeds. So whatever you shift and what you place think. your, what mm -hmm. you think, you create, but also you can, knowing that principle, you can now harness it and direct it consciously. Because okay. if we understand that's how energy moves through us, mm -hmm. we're all conduits, humans um, being conduits for love to flow onto this plane and create. And human being is an abbreviation for what we are. People think it's a noun, but it's actually a verb. We're divine beings in a human form being conduits for that divine love to flow into the earth and create and manifest. And how it flows and creates is through our conscious and unconscious thoughts. So knowing that principle, we can now harness that and direct it with our conscious thought. Mm -hmm. And that's why we come up with things like mantras and affirmations. 
And we've seen the proof over the time. It's mm -hmm. been tested and shown. That's the same with the power of prayer. Prayer is a concentrated thought sent in a particular, particular direction. And mantras and affirmations are like that too. And you keep affirming and affirming. So you're repeatedly putting your consciousness, your attention on something, mm -hmm. and then it creates because you're channeling all this energy into it. And then it comes into manifestation. So does that go along with why, like you say, affirmations, positive affirmations, are starting the day being thankful for what we would want? Does that bring us closer to getting what we want? Um, yes and no. I'd like <laughs> to just qualify or refine that a little bit. I, one of my, the hallmarks of my teachings is to start your day and end your day with a few minutes of gratefulness. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I don't necessarily say gratefulness for what we want. I say oh. gratefulness for all what that we, we have. have and all that we don't have. Because one of, one of my proverbs, axioms of life, is everything you have is everything you want. Everything you don't have is everything you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, when you express gratefulness just for gratefulness' sake, I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful for my new job. I'm grateful for my broken leg. I'm grateful for my divorce. I'm grateful for my flu. I'm grateful for everything I have. It creates instant oneness and attunement with the Creator. And it's a speaking of this knowingness that, that God perceives and knows all my wants and needs before I even know I, ha I want them. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is manifestation happens much more quickly when you're in that oneness with it rather than always feeling lack and wanting something because that keeps reinforcing your feeling separate from it. Oh. Gratefulness creates attunement and oneness and more flows to you when you're just always expressing gratefulness. And the, the flip side of that is, <clears throat> I share that um, there's this one phrase that's the most powerful pairing of words in all of creation, and it's the phrase, I am. Mm -hmm. The meaning of the, the phrase, I am, means, <clears throat> the phrase means, by all the power of God that exists in all of creation, I command this to be so. So whatever follows the words, I am, always happens. So when people say, I'm tired, I'm tired. They'll just be tired. Uh -huh. they'll, make, they'll will themselves tired. So I always tell people, if you're feeling tired, say, I feel tired, but don't say, don't I say am. Don't say, I am tired. Or, oh. or don't, fo don't follow the words, I am, with anything negative. negative. But it, also, don't live in denial. But uh -huh. you, can, you can acknowledge your feelings or your thoughts about something, but not using the words, I am. Because I am is a state uh -huh. of being. And we do that a lot. Everybody does uh -huh. it. It's very, very, it's very um, self-damaging. It's very self-defeating. I'd never thought about it. And it also self-defeats uh -huh. people's objectives and their goals uh -huh. by using I am negatives. Uh -huh. so I'm always getting sick. I, I'm yeah. getting a sore throat. And you, I and am then you will have to sick. Have it. Yeah, <laughs> as opposed to uh -huh. I feel like something might be coming on. I feel. That way you're not in denial, but you're yeah. also not you, directing that life force energy to make that happen. Uh -huh. So... That's using tailoring it into abundance, I am very abundant. I am creating abundance in my life right now. I am becoming more happy and more abundant every day of my life. Mm -hmm. And that keeps reaffirming you're a positive place in the world and, and you then channel that life force energy to create for you rather than against you. Uh -huh. And is, is it true that desire is the cause of all of our suffering? Absolutely, absolutely. So is it? desire, well, I guess it could be desire of anything. Yeah, this one great master I know used to always say, let your greatest desire be to become desireless. <laughs> <laughs> that makes let sense. Let that be your uh -huh. one and only let desire. That be it. Uh -huh. um, because what happens is when you have this desire, desires distance you from the object of your desire because they, they reinforce lack and separation. And so then it's, you're, you're distancing yourself from the object of your desire rather than being grateful and acknowledging the oneness or saying something like I have everything I need and everything I need is given to me ongoingly and then that creates a more positive thought process in you which mm -hmm. helps create and manifest mm -hmm. and and what I also say is you know desire if you want to focus on desire here we get back to temperance again we can go into like the core practices that I personally have or something that other people might find palatable thinking I might be too severe I say if you're going to focus on your desires, um, put in a disclaimer that glorifies and exalts them by, by putting a tag on the end saying, so long as this serves my highest good, mm -hmm. so long as this can benefit others and humanity. It's and, like having a purpose. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, people always, always ask me, what is the meaning of life? And I say, it's to be in service to a purpose which is greater than the self. We're not here just to hoard and be greedy and mm -hmm. take everything for ourselves because mm -hmm. you come in with nothing and you leave with nothing. Uh -huh. 
we come in here to offer something to the world and to leave a legacy of something that bettered our, not only our lives, but bettered other people's lives. So if you're desiring things or you're focusing on desires, put something in that glorifies and exalts them that, that other people can benefit from this, that I can mm -hmm. give to humanity and share mm -hmm. and make, help make the world a better place. And that predisposes you more to be able to draw manifestation and abundance from the universe because that's what we're all here for in the first place. Mm -hmm. Again, whether we like it, know it, or believe it, that is why we're all here. So really the focus of us is to do for others, which therefore brings glory and um, makes each of us a, be a better person. Exactly. And then we, at, in the process, we attain inner peace. Mm -hmm. We get a deeper sense of fulfillment than when we just serve our own selfish wants mm -hmm. and needs. And then we have a healthier, happier life. And then we get to enjoy the ride as it is anyway. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people think, well, I'm not going to do everything for everyone else. What about me? But that's, that comes from a selfish consciousness of lack that doesn't understand that the person who serves is the one who is served. Mm -hmm. The joy of serving is the reward for serving. Mm -hmm. And people who do that, who focus on helping and serving others, they have the happiest, most fulfilled lives ever. Mm -hmm. And they usually find out when all is said and done at the end of their <laughs> lives, that along the way without, here's the key about the desire, without even trying, without even focusing on it, at the end of their lives they realize, wow, I fulfilled all my dreams and I wasn't even trying. And didn't even know it. And yet the people who are only focused on themselves always come out unfulfilled and they always feel lack, like uh -huh. they, it's never enough. Uh -huh. They ran how, out of time. Even they if they became famous it. or wealthy uh -huh. or successful or had everything they thought they wanted, they still feel lack because they were, they were, new, they were mm -hmm. nucleic. They weren't thinking outside the dot of selfishness. And you only get that fulfillment from that. It's very interesting to hear you talk about it, and, <laughs> and I think it reinforces what many of us believe, but it's, it, again, we need to hear it over and over. It's like the mantra that we all need yeah, to know. And it, and it does not mean have nothing. Mm -hmm. See, this is a problem that a lot of religions have taught the world, that poor is, uh, rich is bad and poor is holy, mm -hmm. and that's not true. true. Mm -hmm. God never said that. Jesus never said that. Buddha never said that. I mean, you know, Buddha's me message was detachment, not poverty, but it got so twisted over the years that, you know, you, only poor people are holy, and... Rich is not about money. Rich is about inner peace, inner peace. and inner happiness, mm -hmm. which may or may not include money. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, thank you so much for <laughs> clarifying a lot of this for us. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks for having me. Sandy, thank you so much for being here. I'm just amazed of the um, improvements, the technology, the techniques that have taken place in everything from needlepoint to working with yarn, uh, scrapbooking, and you have a process that is just amazing. Tell us a little bit about it. Thank you, Cheryl. Yes, we do. We do a gicle type printing on canvas, and I now I do my own prints, my own designs on them also. But in addition to that, we also have custom needlepoint designs. People and send you their pictures or something. Yes, uh -huh. absolutely. Their pictures, artwork. Sometimes they'll send us the regular, you know, the real deal. Uh -huh. But other, but mostly we get them through the email as where they've taken scans or they have digital. Mm -hmm. And that really helps That's us. That's really made it easy, it hasn't is. it? And uh -huh. so using that with the di digital, we're able to make some changes and which will improve what they have sent or made or helped us help them to make them into something else such as a stocking or in this Pillow case or a something. doll yes <laughs> i encourage them to think outside of the frame i see well let's this this is a great example of something that you were sent yes uh, a little girl with her pigtails or dog ears whichever this is a self portrait by a young girl mm -hmm. and it was sent to us and i asked her if i could actually bring it here and she agreed. Uh -huh. um, what we did is I, we digitally took it apart, we scanned it oh, uh, and you can see individual this pieces. here, this area here, it's really not a paper doll, it's just as a reminder to leave more you know space here oh. so um, that they could actually make a doll with it once they had stitched it. Mm -hmm. So this is what... This is the results of it right here. Yes. So and it here, really does work. Here she <laughs> is here uh -huh. and she's actually a three-dimensional doll that sits. Um, mm -hmm. The back of her has been, uh, they've used fabric, mm -hmm. but they, this is where she was stitched. So and this put is together. the part, the flat, if Correct. this were flat, that's Absolutely. what you sent her back. Yes, uh -huh. I sent her back the canvas. Uh -huh. And they did, you know, so then this, she was stitched. 
-hmm. and put together and made into a little shelf sitter doll. How and that cute. is actually uh -huh. after her own self portrait. Well, let's take a look at some others because yes. you said sometimes they send you the actual item or sometimes they scan it in. Correct. But, and uh, this was scanned, this was taken, um, this is a military emblem. We do a lot of military emblems mm -hmm. because they, uh, we, we have a lot of people in the military sure. and they'll either do something large like this or this is a smaller version that um, they made into a Christmas ornament. So now did they send you this size or did they, did you reduce it to be this size? They actually, on this one, they told us what, um, I guess what, what, what part they of the, it, well, or, what her, um, this is for a girl, and what her her military branch is and where mm -hmm. she is in her uh, military career. Mm -hmm. So that's what that emblem I is see. specifically for that. And even animals get in oh, the Oh, yes, absolutely, <laughs> Cheryl. Everybody Whoops. loves their pets. And this one was sent to us, this kitty, and it was very busy, too busy to, yeah. to stitch in the too background. Too much to see. Absolutely. Uh -huh. So because of the shape of the kitty and the, uh, I just, you know, rec I uh, asked him about doing an oval. So I removed the background, put him in an oval, and he... Um, was that is just sent perfect. out this way. Uh -huh. Yes, looks like that's what the picture was exactly. Ab well, it is <laughs> actually. <laughs> so, and this uh, shows you that something else we can do, Cheryl, is uh, in removing backgrounds and like this poor little kitty, he it had part of an ear, ear missing. Uh -huh. No, so we removed the background, added at the top. We took part of this ear, added to <laughs> here, and then we made it's it. It's a complete into kitty. Absolutely. Wow. I bet they were so happy when they got this back and saw their... There are pictures of work in progress on this on my website. Oh, okay. Yes. And so what is your website? It's, um, it's www.sandygrossman-morris.com. Okay. Yes. Can look. Now, this is so they adorable. Can. And this, again, this was a, a picture of a whole puppy. They wanted just the face and they wanted the background with this kind of a hot pink. So we, oh, we so did it went that. in, yeah. And that's another thing that, that's really great since these are custom made. If it goes in a little girl's room and this is her color or if this were in a boy's room, you could have made it blue or brown. Exactly, or, exactly. Great. So it makes it a lot of fun and they can um, have one of a kind uh -huh. custom canvas. Because it's their baby, their picture. Absolutely. And talking about going from large to small, this is <laughs> tiny. Well, this is another one, Cheryl, that we uh, took. This was part of a, a larger drawing by a child, oh. and they wanted just this little portion of it put onto canvas, which we did, and then they stitched and made these little flowers. Actually, mm -hmm. are a little three-dimensional, but this yeah. is, I don't have the canvas for this, but um, but this is one that we did. Mm -hmm. Put the little it was made pin into on the a back. Brooch. Exactly. Yes. Now, do you ever go ahead and do the stitching for them, make up things, no. or you do you I do just I had the canvas? Just the canvas that keeps you busy. Doesn't it keeps it? me very, very busy, and so it's it they but they want to do the stitching. Uh -huh. Sure. Uh, we do have some stitchers available that you can find on my website. Uh -huh. That if you do not do needlepoint, mm -hmm. you can go onto there, look those up, and contact them yourself, and mm -hmm. then. Um, and work, work directly, with, with, directly them. with them. I am a needlepoint designer. I do not carry fibers and threads mm -hmm. and all, you know, that goes with that. So um, You make the canvases for them. We do then... the canvases. It's best that they order their custom canvases through their local needlepoint shop. We do take uh, retail orders, but only if there's not another shop that's nearby them uh -huh. that can help them. It's really better to work through a shop. Well, it's really an interesting process. I really appreciate you being here and telling Thank us you. about it. Thank you, Cheryl. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to make a wrapped bouquet. We'll demonstrate working with candy melts. And finally, we'll see how easy it is to make fleece quilts. One of my next guests is a floral designer, and she'll show how to not only wrap a floral bouquet, she'll talk about design principles and explain how to use various products to create an easy but professional look. Another guest will show lots of fun projects to make using candy melts. She'll show how to dip cookies and decorate pretzels, as well as show how to coat rice cereal treats and even dip spoons. And finally, another guest is going to show a non-traditional technique that reduces most of the bulk and results in a very beautiful quilt using fleece fabric.
All of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden at enmu.edu. I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and in the search window, type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We're very pleased to offer a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6800 series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information. And it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. For your copy of this new booklet, go to our website at KENW.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on the booklet or on any of the other booklets we have available online. We'd also like to invite you to sign up for our free e newsletter. Just go to KENW.org and click on the Sign Up Now button and input your email address. Thank you.